Hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully well or this morning. I guess it all depends on where we are, uh, where we're talking to you from. Um, welcome to another Q&A series with uh, David Hubert and myself, where we try to do our best to, um, to yeah, to, 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 to answer all the questions that are piling up. Basically, um, we started this stream, in case you're new here, uh, because there's always questions that get asked during live streams and we don't always have time to answer them. So David and I thought it would be a great idea <laughs> to commit to showing up here every week and trying to take care of those questions. The funny thing is, the idea is that we thought we might be able to get through the backlog, but we never seem to do that. We always seem to have lots of questions that are really amazing during the stream, and we try to do our best to answer a little bit of both. So welcome to yet another one of those evenings. So welcome, chat, to the conversation, and welcome, David, to the conversation. Hello, David. Oh, hi. Wow. That was spontaneous. Yeah, I do that sometimes. I just like to sneak up on you. Hey, your your internet stream. So David made an upgrade um, to his internet. Um, not really to his internet, but fun fact. He uh, all of this time he had been on Wi-Fi because um, he lives in a cave and he doesn't know how electricity works. And so he decided that for whatever reason he should look into actually plugging those fancy little kind of cable cable-y things, you know, you know where the internet comes from into the back of the computer. And now suddenly he has. Um, he should freeze less now. He should be. Less of a statue during streams so let uh, him know how he's doing all of this time i was like wow <laughs> everyone's internet connection sucks everyone yeah. is low res everyone is freezing yeah. and yeah. then one day was like wait a minute wait i'm a actually minute. the one that was on one five so everyone's internet is fine it's it's mine that uh <sighs> how, how are you this evening man no, not, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, as I was, I was, I was mentioning right before the stream, I've been, I, I, I tend to get, I'm like, a, I got a bit of a mad scientist thing going on. When I get an idea in my head, I can't let it go. And um, I had an idea, like David, you and I talked a little while ago about improving the stream. There's lots of things we want to do, like layout wise, graphical wise, uh, like the, there's a long list and we love restream, but you know, there's limitations with restream. So we, I, I wanted to spend a little time looking into some options and I, I dove so deep into this crazy rabbit hole over the last couple of days, just learning about things like 
you know, NDI, um, which is a, a whole type of format that you can broadcast, like broadcast quality uh, uh, signals over networks. And uh, there's been companies over the last couple of years because of the pandemic, learning how to leverage that and doing it on the cloud. So anyways, that led me to like from one place to the next place to the next place. And I just, I feel like I, my brain is just full. So I'm kind of excited. I'm on that sort of like post Eureka moment, like <laughs> buzz that I have right now. So if you're, if you, if I look a little more um, manic tonight, it's that's, that's why. So, do you, so can you share maybe one idea of one of the things that we might be able to improve mm. based on all your mad scientist research that you did in the last two days? Just, just well, one. Okay. So one of the things that I, that, so it's, it, there's, I'll get the, the Coles notes, like the top three things I'd like to be able to do is have more control over the layout um because there's only so much we can do with the layout we have like we have this but as you can see well, if, if you're if you're center i can't, i have to be dead center in the camera or or, or, or let's little... try to do a half of oh yeah each oh yeah oh yeah that's a good like idea this. hold on okay ready ready oh, i gotta be closer one sec yeah you have to be way closer there you it's go weird because my mouth is on my side <laughs> there try it try it i'm there i'm ready i'm ready for you <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> There we go. That's way better than some gimmicky iPhone app. Yeah. Eat your heart out, Steve Jobs. So let me just turn it back to a less uh, irritating version of, there we go. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So what we, uh, so that's one of the things I wanted to be able to do is like just have a bit more control over layout and graphics. Restream is a web-based interface that we use, which is great, but it's limited to what uh, what things that they like that let us do. There's nothing like OBS. OBS, there's so many custom things you can do, but OBS makes it much more difficult to have guests in and out and all these other things. So that was one of the things. The other thing I wanted to improve is I wanted to have in in stream events like Twitch, so people because most people are watching from Twitch, they could actually um, you know participate like when, whenever there's a new follow or something like that we would there'd be a little celebration on the screen there's a bunch of things we can do there and the final thing i wanted to do is have a higher quality videos to post online in the library because the problem is what we're doing is we're recording these streams using restream but it's only like the stream quality settings which are not great they're fine for streams but they're not great for like a library if you want to have like a higher quality sort of image so i think i found a way to do all three of those things higher quality recordings for for later um also uh, the other two things as well so i'm kind of excited awesome kind of excited let's do we'll it keep you posted yeah <laughs> let's do it <laughs> sounds right well let's, and the, let's do all of it yeah the the other cool thing is i think i think what it'll actually even we can do it um kind of i think maybe possibly almost for free which uh, which would be awesome so we like that. Okay, so uh, welcome chat to the conversation as usual. I don't know um, if you have, if we've exhausted your ever uh, sort of cornucopia <laughs> of, of, of amazing questions. We shall see tonight whether that hits rock bottom or not. I have my doubts. Um, so please, if you do have questions tonight, I would I would highly recommend you put a Q colon after um, before the question because it makes it very easy to pick out and drop in um, into the conversation. Um, so yes, so please, um, please do put that in front of the uh, your question so we can find them. Otherwise, we will start digging into the backlog, which I think we'll probably start with because I see no questions as of yet. So let's get the conversation, break the ice a little bit with a backlog question. Let's do it. Okay, let me just uh, get it up here. One second. Uh, okay. So. We have a question. I don't know why it's not sending this to Facebook for some reason, but uh, oh well. It's another thing about Restream that drives me crazy. Okay, so um, Diggin 3D asks, hey, how to animate a character with personality? Hmm. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. I got it. How to animate a character slash personality walk, like a different type of walk, not a not a vanilla walk, but something that's got personality. Where, where, do, you, yeah. where do you start? I would start this one probably with the same disclaimer uh, i think it was <laughs> in the last q a or in our uh previous um uh, conversation with uh, a stream um on my side probably the last time i touched a keyframe was close to nine years ago so uh, i'm going to undust some of my memories of how we actually i actually used to to, <laughs> to do it actually i think the last time i animated a a walk cycle was probably 12, 13 years ago. Uh, Funstery actually wow. 
Jacob Gardner and I uh, both started at DreamWorks, you know, a few a few weeks uh, apart, um, and we were both the two first animators on uh, Shrek Four. And for anyone that had the opportunity to be the first on the animated feature, what you start with is not the glamorous stuff. Often you do a lot of rigging, a lot of background, oh, yeah. a character animation, and Jacob and I probably animated dozens and dozens of work cycle with all the background uh, characters. So I'll try to under some memory from uh, from this time. We have to we have to do some show and tell on some of the older work and, and make it kind of like a prerequisite to like come on our stream every once in a while. When we have yeah. some legend on the stream. We have to be like, hey, we want to have a chat. Everyone wants to get to know you. But the best way of getting to know you is to like show us your dirty laundry. Let's see it. <laughs> Put it out there. Let it let it let it let it hang out there for everyone to see. I think that'll be fun. Uh, all right. So <laughs> let's do a little bit of ping pong with this one. I'll start with one, and you can compliment uh, compliment the. Uh, I would say one of the first thing um, that I learned over time is to <clears throat> start with a first pose that basically represent the character or the emotion of this mm. character. And at first, somehow, uh, I try to. I was often animating a pretty bland, you know, middle of the road, normal walk. And then gradually, in layering, I would add some uh, personality uh, over it. And one day, just figured out that hey, you know what? If my character is depressed, let's just start with a super depressed pause mm -hmm. and start from there. And then each of your posing and in between will have this energy. If it's super proud, the, the <clears throat> other way. So you kind of start with the pose that represent the energy and the personality of your character. And then once you have it, then you go, okay, the first, you know, posing here, second posing there, but the energy uh, uh, of the, uh, especially of the upper body and the <clears throat> neck and head and all that is already there by, uh, by default. So that, that would probably the, be the, the first trick I would uh, throw out there. It makes sense to me. I, I like everything else, I always say it's got to start with reference. And um, you could look at movies. You know, I mean, there's a good way to like, I mean, the John, John Travolta is who I think of whenever I think of a strut. I think of the opening sequence in Saturday Night Live. Or sorry, not Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night, Saturday Night Fever. Fever. There's a really great sequence of him just strutting his stuff on the sidewalk. Um, and, you know, th it's interesting because you have to remember that, you know, when you're trying to communicate to an audience of a character is a certain character or a certain personality, that one thing you can always leverage are some of these pop, pulp culture kind of references. Um, this, of course typically only works in the sort of the the culture in question i mean i think some some movies in some in some um, countries they transcend and they become popular pretty much globally but i think for the most part a lot of these what you think is pop culture may only be your your pop pop your culture uh, and le unless you've moved around a lot and have experienced lots of different cultures so but that being said i mean if you're making a movie for a north american audience there's a good good you know, chance that if you go and reference pop culture, sort of, you know, cult favorite, like hit movies and characters and start there is always an interesting way of doing it because it's sort of, you know, it, there's a sense of nostalgia and it will like immediately, like people will, will find it familiar right away and they'll know what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, or you can start, you know, ask, ask your friends or like, you know, do it yourself. I mean, um, is it Kevin? Yeah. Kevin Perry. I, I, he's um, a stop motion animator and we actually, he was, um, he actually uh, was a judge, or not a judge, a, a reviewer for one of the Anim Challenges not so long ago. I think it was actually for the stop motion um, uh, challenge, actually. He, I've been fascinated by, by this guy for a long time. His YouTube is, uh, channel is amazing. Really, really funny. Very creative stuff that he does. And what I find, in, what, what, where I discovered him a long time ago was his very, very viral video on 100 walks on a treadmill. And they're amazing. They're really, really quite good. And he's clearly just having a lot of fun. So, you know, you always, you always think outside the box. You can find some good references on the internet. Or you can maybe just buy a treadmill or go buy a used one somewhere and then just try stuff. <laughs> just try stuff. Experiment, you know? Yeah. There's a... I know it, it was part of one of uh, Jacob's uh, lecture, but something that he's often mentioning is... Uh, 
And tell me, Brent, if the term is wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's specificity. Yeah, that's my favorite term. All right. I, I, yeah, it's definitely, I'm an expert now, uh, only because I hear him say it all the time. And so, yes, you are correct. You've said it Specificity. Correctly. Perfect. Yes. So this can apply to many things, but I would say for if you're out mm -hmm. of ideas for a walk, just imagine, okay, this character has a little pebble in his right foot. Mm -hmm. uh, this character is itching on the left side, but... It, it doesn't really want to, to, to show it. To try to be very specific about what is going on in the character's mind. Is there, you know, some uh, subtle uh, physical disability? Um, and, you know, something that we're often doing, uh, or the walk cycle are super symmetric, but most people are asymmetric. I mean, my head is slightly, you know, tilt on this side and my one of my foot is actually a little bit more on the exterior and so you know just play around and and had all those asymmetry and specific little thing that will make your uh walk you know different than any uh, other walk and if you're like well i did a depressed walk i did a happy walk i did a trot well start to go and be way more specific with little details. And then you're like, well, yeah. slightly limping from the right uh, mm -hmm. and slightly mm -hmm. off, off center on, on this side. And this is all of a sudden, uh, if it's subtle, it's, it's just going to be uh, unconscious, but it, it's going to have personality. For totally, sure. absolutely. And I think you touched on something that's really important here as well that that um, needs to probably, to, deserves a little bit of a deeper dive. And that is, you know, personality um, and character walks, you know, to, for a character to exist on screen and sort of resonate and feel believable, they need to have some sort of motivation. And so I think it's always important to consider what the like, I mean, your example of a limp is good, because I mean, you know, it's a very, it's a very physical motivation, it is to try to favor the one leg that's injured. And there's a conscious sort of, you know, or maybe even subconscious sort of deliberateness to that 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 limp to try to favor a leg, um, but in, in some cases, like to say a sad walk is maybe not enough, like because it's not nuanced. Mm -hmm. It's going to end up feeling very sort of you know, you know, like cookie cutter. And I think if you were to spend some time asking yourself why are they sad, maybe there's a different spectrum of sp sad because there's many 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 variations of sad. Um, so I think that sometimes it's just enough to inspire you when you actually make a choice on why. And sometimes it might be a choice that you are making because you're making for a demo reel. And sometimes it's a, you, you should just be analyzing the story and understanding what specific type of sad that character is experiencing. And how do you communicate, like you said, the specificity of the emotion and the motivation currently on that character? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I say there's different kind of side. I mean, if you... And you can bring this in, in any different direction, but if you have the feeling of loss or something, then maybe your character will actually have his arm because he kind of want to protect uh, uh, himself. Mm -hmm. As in other situation, it will be arm just down and just depressed, maybe because you know he got rejected from another job or something like that. And you know you, you can and there's a part that yes, it's really going to affect your anim animation, and there's another part that is just you know, animators need a sandbox at some point to be creative and not just repeat the same formula. So just create yourself a little sandbox that will allow you to do things a little bit different than how you've done it, done them before. Totally. Good advice. Um, I don't know. I think we kind of answered the question. It is a pretty big question. I mean, it strikes the heart of how do you properly, you know, um, give you know, how do you bring realism into a character, even as enduring something as mundane as a walk? And I think that that's that that to boil it all down, don't treat it like a mundane walk. Mm -hmm. Walks, are, you know, vanilla walks are good when you're learning the mechanics, the body mechanics of a walk. But you should never have a vanilla walk in, in, a, in a film because, I mean, there's always an opportunity to tell a story even with a walk and sometimes even more, more even even especially with a walk mm -hmm. you know you can you can tell a lot about a character like John Travolta at the beginning Saturday night fever um, wh who that person is just by looking at them walking around and how they're feeling where how they're motivated kind of you know basically who they are in a nutshell so just don't treat it like a vanilla piece of of animation and treat it like uh, an opportunity to really communicate to the audience yeah we have All lots right. of questions that have piled up in chat oh my god all right Don't grab one? Yeah, let's dive in there. Okay. Um, let's see. I'll just grab the one that's at the top here, I think. Let's see. 
question by Black Hall VFX. If you were hiring creature animators and you could tailor the perfect demo reel that come, came across your, your sorry, could well, let me try that again. And you could tailor the perfect demo reel that comes across your desk when you are reviewing, what four or five shots would be in it? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, those would be very high quality of four or five very different animal or mm. creature. I would probably want to see a pretty solid quadruped uh, animation in there, a dog, a lion, a cat, whatever. Um, having maybe a monkey that goes from on four to on two, so it oh, kind yeah. of shows nice. this, this transition. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing a flying uh, and maybe two different mm -hmm. one, a super heavy dragon and then a very a, a small uh, bird. Um, and then I would say probably just a complicated creature to animate mm -hmm. maybe it's tentacles maybe it's a mix of you know uh, big tail with secondary motion just basically something that's is like okay you need to deal with the physics of the mass and then you need to deal with the <clears throat> wings but they're one of those wings that are broken and there's those tentacles here and there so basically something that that looks uh complicated to animate and that is well executed, which shows mm -hmm. that, okay, you're able to process information in a way that uh, even those complicated tasks, you can deal with them. Yeah, that's good. It covers most of the bases in my mind as well. I think that, I mean, for sure, one of the things you were going to want to put on there is is something that it feels un, un like non traditional. Like think mm -hmm. like think outside the box and do something crazy. Like uh, like the tentacle monster is a really good example of that, and that makes me shiver just thinking about it because I really hate animating tentacles. As a matter of fact, I don't think I, I don't think I know an animator that actually does because they're a pain in the ass, right? Like it's like oh, it's the ultimate question: F K or I K? Ah, well, I got some news for you. You're going to need both because there's no way you're going to survive the shot otherwise. And it's like both. How do you? What? I don't even. So yeah, it's um, it's it, I've been there. It's not fun, and it can be pretty complicated. And you usually need a, a series of of usually some scripts and tools to make your life a little bit easier um, to manage a scene like that. And which is so it, at the end of the day, it shows your ingenuity as to how to tackle it technically, but it mm -hmm. also shows how you can actually transpose things you understand about the way m movement works and try to you know you remember the move uh, the game Spore. It mm -hmm. was um, done a long time ago, and it had pr a lot of procedural animation in it. I, I yeah. as an animator, I really appreciated that game because these these characters, like the, there was these this sort of natural evolution of characters that sort of came to came to be. Like the creature design itself was procedural, and so therefore the animation systems also needed to be procedural. And um, you know, it's using a bunch of like AI and some machine learning to figure that out. Where you know you have the advantage of just you know, having a, you know, your animator brain and solving that problem. And I'm interested to see how that works. I'm very curious mm -hmm. to see how you conquer a problem like that. But it's, it's, I would also say you should put in some of this, the sort of the staple stuff that David said too, because I mean, that makes it easy to be like, okay, okay, I'm interested because you check the boxes. It says that you do the thing you're going to be able to do the things that you more often are going to need to do, but then uh, to really put you on the top, I'm going to be curious as to what, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to show me to separate yourself from the, from the pack? I would say one other thing here too, in this case, up before on a, on a previous stream and that is it's not what you put on the reel always but also what you don't put on the reel i would recommend strongly um not relying on these high like these animations that are just reproductions of videos i think that that is a great learning tool but i think to really impress me if i'm looking at this reel i need to see that you can stitch it I, i'm fine if it's a maybe a bunch of video clips but you've had to bridge big clips like big gaps between them Mm -hmm. I'm that's fine. But if it's all just one literally from like from fr the first frame to the last frame reproduction of the video, I'm less interested because it's like, you know what, no offense, but anybody can rotoscope. And even if you didn't rotoscope, then I'm almost wondering, well, why did you do it the hard way? You know what I mean? Like, uh, it, what's the point then? You The point would be that you need animators need to create things that don't exist. And you're learning from the reference to be able to understand what that thing, those things that don't exist would look like. And uh, I need it. I need to see how you're able to interpolate that. Yeah, I would say something that would mitigate this effect pretty much right away in, in your reel is to have good stylized animation yeah. included in your sure. reel as well. And if it could be, here's my hyper reel, dog, run, jump, whatever, and here's a super stylized cartoony dog with kind of the 
same kind of animation, but very exaggerated. <clears throat> All of a sudden, like, okay, there's no way this can be like rotoscope. It, it, it needs to. Uh, you need to apply all the rules of uh, animation uh, yep. on top of that. So that kind of check this this box yep. for sure. Yeah, it's like, what do you like? Where's the value? It's the same thing with motion capture stuff. I'm like, show me what you did. Mm -hmm. Like, show me what you did relative to that. So if you're right, if you're basing it heavily off of a video reference, but you've gone and put it through these really creative filters and like caricaturized the whole motion, then okay, that's a skill that I you know that doesn't doesn't you know come around all the time. And so I'm interested for sure. Yep. yep. Okay, good. I think we hit that one right out of the park, David. Yeah, feel good. <laughs> feeling good. All right. I have. I, I want another I wanna put, one. Yeah, I want to put the next one up because I I love this question. Uh, it's all. It's it's just such a juicy one. It's always a good one. So, do you guys prefer blocking, hmm. stepped or spline? I'll take this one. I'll start this one off uh, because because I have something hot on my brain right now. Unless you have, looks like I'm, st I'm stopping uh, mid flow. I, I, I just wanted to have. There's a, th a third one in there that that is in layering oh, go. as well. Say that again. There's a what? Uh, blocking. You can go in step. You can go in spline, or you can just layer. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Layer right. So, well. in other words, it's not boolean. There's actually a third thing in your brain. This layered approach. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the short answer to this question is it depends. There is never going to be the one way to do it for all motions. For instance, when I'm doing an acting shot, I really, really like blocking it out. But here's the thing. It's not like it just stays blocked. I kind of have like there's there's for me, my workflow involves all three of the things. There's a blocking, there's a layered approach, and there's spline. All of it lives at some point along the line in my work. Now, with the exception of some work, I never I never block with step. And the reason why I don't is because it's like, like the example would be would be um, uh, cycles. I really don't like blocking stepped with cycles because for me it's such a controlled movement and i need to see the, the rhythm movement right away like i just I, I, I don't want to hide it from myself it doesn't make any sense it where the blocking for me for a complicated scene for acting or even just an action sequence it's there for staging purposes i need to understand the overall timing and composition um, of the whole piece and i need and usually if i'm working professionally it's because i'm working off a storyboard or an animatic i need to make sure that that it all fits into this thing so i start with step and then it evolves it, and then i do some splining and then i add some layered stuff afterwards but yeah so that's my answer to the question yeah I, it's funny because for me it seems that my process evolved throughout my mm. all of my career so mm. you know the, the the workflow that i have in mind which is later literally mm. the last iteration of my workflow until uh, i i mm. stopped uh, uh animating uh, it, it was a hybrid approach, as mm -hmm. you said. I, I you I started just with uh, uh, in spline, then understood blocking uh, in step, which is basically then you can focus on poses, yeah. but focus. then realize that okay, but if I go all in in step, then at some point I have to go in spline. I'm like, oh my god, this motion is not <laughs> making any sense. Yeah, yeah, it goes from point A to point B to a, yeah. a few great poses, but and then it was so <laughs> long to rework everything in, in, in spline uh, that by the end I, I was usually and i agree with you it was literally depending on what i was animating uh creature animation i was very often using just a uh, layered spline approach okay this is just the core of my motion okay this is just the bending of the um, of the uh, upper and, and lower body okay now let's deal with the shoulders and those one uh, one after the other but for character animation i still used to start with uh blocking and i would mm. toggle like next pose next pose uh <laughs> but i was also keeping all my curve in, in spline so i could press play and see oh okay the i can see that the rhythm the speed is a little bit off i can see that yeah. i'm going to have this technical <laughs> problem here between this pose and this pose so as i advance with my pose and i go from one to the other that gives the intensity illusion that it in step it was still in spline so i could go from one to to, right. to the other and not to get to this extremely depressing po point where you're <laughs> super happy with your blocking uh, yeah. then you put everything in spline and then yeah. you just want to kill yourself and and, and stop <laughs> because you realize that you have way more work than you 
intended to. to it's so funny because I've never heard anyone say it like that. And I say it all the time in my classes. It's because my workflow is I usually teach people how to start with step unless it's a, unless it's a cycle where I, I, I tell mm -hmm. them full disclosure. I'm like, look, I, I'm not, I don't use step in, in the, uh, the, the loops, but um, otherwise I normally do. And then it goes to this rough phase where I'm doing all the splining and stuff. And the, the hardest thing to get over, especially when you're new is the confidence like shattering moment of going from a block that looks really graphic and the timing feels so tight. And then it just like, it's like even just block, <laughs> block out a bouncing ball and then you'll see for yourself because the default splines are going to look terrible. It's not going to be sharp on the bottoms. It's going to be hovering and, you know, slowing in and slowing out of that collision. It just goes to show you that, yes, there is still a, a decent amount of stuff to do, but I teach mm -hmm. them to not panic and to expect it and then to embrace it because I still think there's a, um, often a big benefit of being able to focus on those key poses and not get distracted by all these other, like by all these other things. Cause usually when you're new at animating, it's like, that's the, problem it's like you're like a you're you're like this attention span of a squirrel there's all these moving parts and you're you, you forget to stay on target which is to make sure you have all the right poses and the basic staging is there first and um yes it's hiding a bunch of stuff that's kind of ugly for sure but yeah. um you know you could be working on it's like trying to you know i don't know it's I, i'm trying to think of a good analogy but it's it's uh it's yeah, it's it's like trying to put out a fire while you're cooking as opposed to yeah. like stopping the cooking and getting the fire extinguisher. And like, so it, it, that's the problem. I find that when I work personally and I'm just trying to do it all at the same time, I, it, I find it a bit more of a struggle because my brain is working on more like there's there's more sort of consecutive like threads of thinking that mm -hmm. I have to deal with. I mean, the reason uh, I think uh, f most for most people, the, the reason why we would go in in post to pose in step is to we always try to simplify for our brain. OK, just evaluate the silhouette <clears throat> of this pose. OK, now just think about this part. Um, and it definitely help if you mm -hmm. just see the step pose, because then you're not yourself or a director or supervisor is not annoyed or distracted mm. with very crappy exactly. interpolation at the time where it, it's not appropriate to look about that. And that's, just... that's worth something for sure. Yeah, but of course, for, it depends on your for supervisor. Sure. I, right? I mean, there's many times that I will show my blocking in <clears throat> step blocking, yeah. but it's just that I work in spline. And when yeah. I'm about to show, I'll put everything in step. I'm going oh, to that's show the play blast. Oh, and wow. then they're like, okay, now you just focus mm. on the rhythm, on the storytelling, the it. poses, all that. But as soon as I'm back, I, I, I'm back in, in, <laughs> in spine for sure because I, again, I dread that moment yeah. Yeah. that is going. <laughs> there was a point that I was almost animating on on four, if not uh, on two, uh, still in step. And then it takes so much time mm. to clean up all mm. of those curves because at that point mm. you have tens of thousands yeah. of keyframes. Yeah. You would have had to do it anyways. Curves. You yeah. would have had to do it anyways, but you just prefer doing it as you do it so that, or as you go, so that you don't get shocked. Poor David. David, I know. Look at me. Look me in my eyes. It's gonna. <laughs> it, it's gonna it'll be okay. Be, it'll be it'll fine. Be okay. <laughs> Everything's gonna be alright. Okay, so that's great. I mean, this is an interesting topic. I I could literally speak the whole night on this. I would say one last little thing for me. The caveat on my the way, like it, whatever works for you. You know what I mean? I'm sure this question is probably not really looking for the magic ingredient. The Holy Grail answer to the question is probably comes from curiosity. Um, but yeah, you're going to hear a lot of different answers to that question. And I mean, like if it works great, I would, I really highly recommend trying out different workflows though, and trying out different ways and approaches of doing it. Cause you don't know what kind of person you are until you try it sometimes, you know, I had no choice because I was programmed very early on because I'm so old. I learned how to do this with a pencil and paper. And so there was no other way other than working in step because in, in, unless we wanted to literally as we were doing it we would have to be straight aheading it all the time yeah. and that would mean literally creating all the in-betweens by hand which is obviously time consuming so basically you wanted to economically think think about trying to can i validate this without the, 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 doing that kind of work um and then if i can i can be like okay i can move forward with confidence and um and that was just the way it was it was no there was literally no other way so i think it, it kind of sat in my brain really early on that part of why i think like this comes from just early you know you, you can't teach an old dog new tricks i guess is what i'm saying i just <laughs> i'm set that's just the way my brain works like this so yeah uh, I agree. Uh, I mean, most people that I work with, we uh, all of our workflow were slightly different. And so, you know, uh, at some point you just find the one that is that works well for you. 
Exactly. Because I mean, I always tell my students, like, look, the battle of the workflows, you're going to hear like lots of instructors or lots of other like mentors out there um, tell you this, the magic, perfect way of doing it. And it's, it's, it's a lie because mm -hmm. it's, it, well, it's not a lie. It might be magic and perfect for them. And mm -hmm. so they're naturally excited by it, but it's hard to imagine what it's like to see the, the, the process of animation through another person's eyes. And so at the end of the day, like take it for what it's worth, a grain of salt and, and you know, t keep an open mind and maybe even try it and see, cause you might be excited. Maybe it like completely revolutionizes the way you work. Maybe you reject it completely, or maybe it's somewhere in between and you kind of integrate some of it into your workflow. It doesn't matter as long as one way or another, you have either validated your own workflow or your workflow has, has, has improved and has evolved. That's yeah. it. I mean, really honest to God, who cares how you animate as long as you get, you know, get it done and it's awesome. You get paid. Yep. Try it before you reject it. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> try it. It's like, it's like, I feel like I'm, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like teaching a kid to try new food. It's like, okay, I know it might look gross, but just try it. Who knows? You might like it. <laughs> they never do. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, you know what? Sequoia is actually pretty good. She surprises right. me. She is a really adventurous eater and I'm really impressed by it. And I think it's because we kind of try to put that in her brain really early. Um, but I mean, some kids are just, they just, they just don't. They're like, nope. Did did she try oysters? She has, I think. I think she likes sushi for sure. She definitely likes sushi, which I'm impressed by. She likes the unagi a lot, the barbecue eel. Oh, she just can't get enough. Holy crap! You guys have been busy. There's questions all over the place. Jesus. Uh, do you want you pick the next one? I've been picking. I think so. It's your oh, I, sorry. I I, I I somehow in restream I cannot scroll into. Oh into yeah, those. I forgot. Okay. I so just I'll see just... literally the five last posts and, and that's it. So. I'll let you. Oh, hey, this question is for you, I think. Well, I mean, I don't. Did you work on Shrek? Uh, yes, I did. I think oh, that's a story okay. that I told like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, it was, oh I, I, I think I was distracted during one of your stories. I was trying to figure out something I might. So I'm sorry if I totally misunderstood. I didn't, didn't, didn't register that. This one's definitely for you because I definitely did not work on Shrek. While animating those background characters in Shrek 4, did you find that you had to tone down the personality walks to not upstage the main characters? Hmm. Good question. Uh, I would say for background characters in general, you, you don't go crazy with the personality of the uh, uh, of the characters. For, I mean, for many reasons. But first of all, you have to produce them like on a daily basis, uh, and you you don't have sometimes two walk cycle uh, a day, so you you don't have too much time to ask yourself. And if there's a you know glorified background character uh, walk cycle. Often uh, it, it might be handled directly by the animator of the uh, of the shot. Sometime reusing some of the animation that you've done and adjusting it or creating is his own. Um, so we, we're not purposely toning down personality. It's just that it was not a focus. It was just that mm -hmm. okay, we're going to have hundreds of characters in the background. Most of them will might not be properly lit, and yes, none of them should clearly attract the attention, the eyes of the audience that needs to be in the main character. So th there was no effort at all to do anything that was uh, super original or, um, you know, that would catch attention for them. Yeah, it's also just like not super economical to put that kind of energy in background characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, you, you could go crazy and, and try to prove yourself by doing so. But you could, you know, you could. Why not? Yeah. But yeah, it, it, we're not in this situation. We're more like, okay, can we get those 180 walk yeah, cycle out it. of the door so I can start animating shots? Yeah, that's right. So, right get her done. How many, how many do I have to to do? Yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> just crank them out. Exactly. It's uh, it's it, you, but you could also you could just be like the overacting um extra in the background of a film, you know. And it, it's also the, you know, it, it, it was not uh. You know, I'm trying to think. Um, uh, think of other reference of uh, animated feature that are way more stylized. You know, Sony has as many. Like, let's take Hotel T for. Uh, I'm pretty mm. sure that in Hotel T, if you look in the background, there's some crazy uh, walk there. But Sh Shrek was not the mm. most, you know, stylized, mm. crazy style of animation. So it was, it That's was true. fairly, uh, you know, um, neutral. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Uh... 
it's uh i guess it really comes down to the production at the end of the day is like what like what kind of style you kind of you know going after and and that will dictate a little bit how you how you approach get the background characters um oh boy can we get a stream where we watch you guys animate something <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can definitely have you animate something. Oh, God. Jeez. I, I think myself animate something would be me looking, where is this button again? How can I, where do I get my curve editor? Brent, where, where's the constraint again? It, it would be a yeah. disaster. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so the good news is that I am planning some streams that will be um, um, to promote a new um, learning path that I'm trying to put together. Um, and... Um, so there will be some streaming involved there. We, you you will see me animating, but it's not going to be animating anything huge because it's a lot of really introductory level kind of animation stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, technically, uh, it would check the box on your question. But maybe one day down the road, we can get more kind of live stream demos. I mean, the, the goal is to end up with enough people that are part of like the affiliates to the uh, to our the Agora community where we can like people are just doing that naturally on Twitch. You'll be able to tune in and see because a lot of the people that are on Twitch are doing exactly exactly that they're not really doing what we're doing right now they're just like literally i feel like animating so i'm going to animate and i'm just going to put it out there on the internet for people to watch if if people want to watch that's great and um you know sometimes it's kind of borderline interactive but not the same as what you're getting right now is for, for sure so stay tuned joe animates <laughs> i think I we look forward to your heckling i think i've Who's seen a, a long question from yeah, it's, Veronica. It's, yeah you did that's the next one here we go I'm going to have to finish reading this one. Um, okay, so question. Something I've noticed on the conversation with is that for many of the guests, what they are doing now in their careers isn't what they thought they were going to do if you had asked their younger selves, so 10 or 20 years from now, what do you... Oh, geez. I'll, I'll have to, this is gonna, hold on a second. I'll just read the rest with it unhighlighted because I can't highlight read yeah, it yeah. Like, otherwise. Um, uh, what do you want to be doing? So flipping that question on you two... Um, if someone had asked you that question 20 years ago, what would you have said? Holy shit. Uh, so le let's assume that this question was asked when we got out of school, right? Mm. To kind of keep it a little bit in the field of uh, yeah. animation. I think that's fair. Uh, Sadly, 20 years ago, I, I, I was out of school doing this. So. <laughs> uh. I would say when I got out of school, what I was good at and what I preferred was log dev. Mm. So texturing, shading, rendering, lighting, compositing. Uh, I was pretty good at making a nice image, um, even with the, the tools that we had uh, back then. And this is actually the first you know, job offer that I got it was a lighting uh, uh, artist on a VFX show. I don't even remember what, what it was. And literally the first day that I was supposed to to start, I, I got a call just before leaving my apartment tell me to not bother coming in. They were actually closing down the studio, like the day that I was uh, supposed to, to start. Yikes. So that was a bummer. <laughs> did, did a few a few call because, you know, Texto <laughs> didn't exist, right? That's right. <laughs> in that time, ma made a few call and I had friends that started at a new studio in Montreal called TVA International. <laughs> um, and it turns out they needed animators and I knew how to use a CG software to make <laughs> stuff move. <laughs> so <laughs> I did uh, gladly. Uh, uh, and that was the beginning of my animation career being extremely bad at first and slowly suck a little bit less year after year after year um so fresh out of school what did i thought i don't know that i would be working on those in <clears throat> look dev in those big vfx shows i saw uh, i was also playing a lot of music uh, i wanted to direct music videos so most definitely in my mind you know, letting my imagination run free. I was thinking of cool uh, CG environment and stories and character that uh, could be used for music videos that I could be uh, directing. Uh, I would say probably when I got out of school, I thought this would be the direction I would be going towards. And if I would ever one day be directing a music video, it would be the, you know, the, uh, the, um, the best of what I could 
very accomplished. So that would be the height I, of your accomplishment. Yeah. I think it shows you just how completely off I was to what was <laughs> actually going to happen. Hmm. Um, well, if you would have asked me this question a long time, you know, 20 years ago, I would have told you that one day I would build an online community on this <laughs> imaginary framework called the internet, um, where all the artists in the world that wanted to learn yeah. Cause I mean, it yeah, is, right. I mean, I was, I was, uh, in this, this, for me, this was or late nineties, right? So yeah, the internet was not what it is today. That's, that's for sure. It, it um it kind of felt like it changed overnight though it was like hotmail was starting to become popular back then but yeah it's, it wasn't it wasn't what it is now this this is the back in the days of like myspace you know but i i i don't know i i think i didn't have a clear picture to be honest i knew that i wanted to animate i i had a feeling that i would probably want to get into video games it was the first place i tried to get a job was at a video game company um, so I guess that is a pretty good indication is what I thought I would maybe want to be doing is that I kind of gravitated towards that right away. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I didn't have a clear picture. I just knew that this animation thing was fun and I knew that it gave me the, 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 the ability to, to tell stories and telling stories is what I really enjoy to do. I mean, I, you know, as you all know, I do like to talk. That's, you know, this is a very good outlet for that. And I, it just, for me, it just seemed like the obvious choice to just sort of let, just travel down this path and see where it takes me. But I didn't have a very specific destination. I really didn't, to be completely honest. I just knew that I wanted to kind of head down this road and see where it took me. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. I would say in many of those conversations that we had, including with uh, Troy uh, Quain la last week, uh, mm. it, it's, it's good. It, it, it's best just to be open minded and, yeah. and go with the flow. It, okay. Get a mission, get a goal, uh, all that, but remain flexible. Just yeah. have a goal and be open to the fact that you're going to find a real, you know, path as you're yep. trying. But you, but you need to move forward, right? If Absolutely. you don't move forward, you will never. So have a goal to move forward, but yep. know that along the way, you're going to find what is the real goal that, 100%. You, that you didn't know that existed. So yep. don't, there's no don't, shame in that. No, That's exactly. Sure. Don't have a perfect master plan that you're going to turn down every opportunity no. that is not exactly what you have in mind. This is, this is not, <sighs> let's say, how all of the guests that are very successful that we had so far, how it happened for, for them. None of yeah. them had a very clear <laughs> goal or, or path. They all discovered it along the, uh, the, the way. Absolutely. Yeah, Troy's a really good example of that because he just, for him, he was like, he was going to be an animator, right? And it was like the universe kept telling him that, you know, you may be a good animator, but like, you're supposed to be doing this. And it was like, it was funny. And even after getting a first taste of that, he still fell back into the, the reflex of trying to look for an animation job. Um, and, um, but yet for some reason the, the planets lined again and the universe spoke and said, you should be doing this instead. And then like that, that, that path of storytelling led him to a job in as, as, as a director, which is, you know, and he's happy doing it and he's good at it. So like, good for him, good for everybody. Yeah. But yeah, he needed to leave room for himself to just be like, well, I mean, I mean, yeah. people seem to think I'm good at it and I do enjoy it. So like, <laughs> screw it let's do it like it wasn't what was part of the plan written in my like you know grade eight like lined the like, notebook about what i wanted to do when i grew up who cares yeah things change yeah as you mentioned you know when chance is meeting you know uh, preparation this yeah. is when you know opportunity just yeah. show up that's right. uh, and you know there's an other expression i don't know if it, that's the perfect one but you know there's a good part of fake it until you you make fake it in, in a you. sense that you know if he didn't accept this job as a 3d animator saying yeah i can do 3d no no problem i mean i know computer i can take my email yeah. how complicated would it be <laughs> exactly. uh, if he didn't kind of it's not even lying, it's just no. being very confident, maybe that's a it. little too confident, but yeah, still, it. It, it, when you have confidence that you can f figure things out, you're like, okay, it's going to take me a couple of weeks, but you know, I'm, I, I'm smart. Uh, if, he, if he never accepted that, he would never have this opportunity no. of a producer coming in say, you know what, it looks like you have a lot of opinions. What <laughs> about like you that. come in the that storyboard really department <laughs> and then say, okay, yeah, why not? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was another <laughs> steep learning curve uh, there, but one thing is leading to another, and That's it. then you're a director directing yeah. your own movie at Sony because yeah. you you did you answered yes at the right time in the right moment uh, to yeah. offers that you were not completely <clears throat> qualified, but you 
you were confident that you would figure it out. So exactly. that's usually the, the, those are the pivots that are usually leading you in the right direction. Exactly. It's, um, I think another expression would be never stare a gift horse in the face. That would be another good expression to say here. It's not a good idea. It didn't, it didn't end very well for uh, the Trojans, just <laughs> FYI. Um, but yeah, I think that the, um, it, it's just, I think it, it there is a, a secret recipe there that is just kind of going with the flow and, you know, just, just take a sink or swim attitude, right? It's like, just jump in and figure it out. And if you don't figure it out, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, you're going to figure out, okay, well, this is, you know, I, I, like I said, I think I said this before, you're going to find out that maybe because you tasted that, you might not be good at it, but maybe you realize you really like it and that's going to motivate you to get better. And then maybe, you know, continue down that path. Or you might be like, I hated it. And now, you know, good, focus on something else, you know? Sometimes you can always you can always gain something from a failure. Always, you know. We 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 often say that you learn more from failing than you do from winning. Uh, from from winning. One of my Charlie Sheen winning. <laughs> um, um, yeah. No, I was it. Uh, you know, you 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 from from success. I think is the word I meant to say. I like how I just mutated into Charlie Sheen. That was good. <laughs> do I look strung out? Do I look like Charlie Sheen? How was my impression? Okay, moving good. along. That, that, that just brought back super random <laughs> memories from I don't know, eight years ago something. Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he was he was kind of going viral with his like glow, like his his very public meltdown on the internet and his winning strategy. I don't know. He just appeared on the scene all of yeah. nowhere and disappeared. What seems to yeah. be like thirty I minutes after. I don't know what happened to that guy. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, we got more questions. I think. Oh, I know. That was the last Q apostrophe. What do you know? We can actually take, or um, not, not apostrophe, sorry, Q, uh, Q colon. Um, let me just make sure, because I mean, maybe someone forgot the Q there. Let me just scan quickly. That's my, that's my scanning sound. Uh -oh. um, Veronica is making us feel even older than we already felt. Oh, God, who's Charlie Sheen? <laughs> well, I could have made it worse. I could have said, I could have evoked his father's name, Martin Sheen, and then you would really think that I was ancient. Charlie Sheen, you don't know who Charlie Sheen is? How, how, how dare you? How dare you be so young? So I find you offensively young, Veronica, okay? It's there, I've said it. I said it. I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even ashamed to say it. Um, by the way, um, Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen, like she's now made her sad. Um, Charlie Sheen was, uh, uh, in a lot of like, I mean, my, I think, I think the classic, which is a bit of foreshadow actually in a way, but he, oh God, I'm just going to make, make reference to another movie that no one, no one's seen in here, but uh, Ferris Bueller's day off classic, classic movie. You probably, some of you definitely have seen this, you, you know, whether or not, whether you're old, as old as I or not, because it is pretty, pretty classic with, um, with, um, what, what Matthew Broderick. That was, mm -hmm. it was Matthew Broderick, right? Um, um was it? Oh no, I'm I'm not sure. Who? I don't think so. Maybe maybe. Uh, maybe. Oh yeah yeah no you're Matthew right. Broderick, super, yeah. super super young Matthew Broderick. Super right. young Matthew Broderick. Yes, exactly. And there's a scene where where Ferris Bueller's sisters in the police department, and there's a strung out guy in in there across like across from her in in Charlie like the Sheen? waiting room, and it was Charlie Sheen. Yeah. What? Yeah yeah yeah. Very, very random, random cameo, but that was Charlie Sheen. But he's much more, he was in Apocalypse Now, for instance. He was the star in, well, I would say Marlon Brando was probably the star of Apocalypse Matt Now, but Charlie Sheen would have def definitely been. It was a weird movie because. No, wait, his, it was his father. It was Martin. Sheen. But wasn't Charlie in it as well? I thought he was. Oh, oh yeah, God. you're right. Mar you're right. You're right. Uh, Martin I'm, was, yeah. God, I'm so, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You're He's, right. You're right. Martin was the star, but I but I thought that Charlie was around that and really young. Maybe I'm wrong. No, because Martin would have been too young then, and he probably didn't have Charlie at that point. Anyways, I, I suck. So. See, that's how long ago we're talking. I so long ago. It's not that I, I wasn't around to see it. I was just so 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 young. I don't remember it. So it could be worse. <laughs> Veronica, which one's worse? Not being young enough to ever see it, or be too old to uh, remember it? I'll choose. I'll choose door number. Uh, choose door, door door number one. Door number Veronica. See, Veronica, now this Q&A question. Yeah. It, it, this Q&A <laughs> right session is rails. just a, a train wreck. <laughs> right off the rails. Way to go, Veronica. You failed as a can. I dare you. You're banned for the next stream. Just kidding. We love you, Veronica. Okay, so let me um, yeah, let me bring up the... the exactly. Let me bring it up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That's not the backlog. Hold on a second. Where are you, backlog? 
Powerful. I had it up for the love of, okay, forget it. I'll just bring it up again. I have too many, I have too many, uh, too many browsers, too, too, too many tabs. Too many tabs. It is, it is an abomination. Okay, here we go. Back to the very well prepared by none other than Scott Hewitt, the, um, our Q&A backlog. Okay, so um, the next question here, I'll read it and then I'll paste it just to speed things up a little bit so you can dig into it, David. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Asson asks, do you, do you have to make sure the animation looks good from every direction or just from the camera view? Classic question. Uh, have at it, David. Yeah, I would say it depends. What are you doing? Oh, the depends. <laughs> Strikes again, the depends. <laughs> um, I would say definitely for animated feature or anything. I don't want to say anything other, but most things other than gameplay animation, yes, you do want to favor uh, uh, camera, but there's definitely some extremes. There, there's other department as you like CFX that might have to deal with cloth and, and, and fur and deformation and, and a lighting department that might see the shadow of a arm mm -hmm. that is just completely in the background that you don't see, but we might see uh, the, the, the shadow of the uh, reflection. So I would say for most cases, you try to make it as look as you can from the mm -hmm. camera and you can cheat a little bit. But if you cheat too much, and I've seen something that is not even cheated, is just exploding from everywhere other than the perfect angle that is from the, the camera, that's usually a bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, for obviously in gameplay animation and brand, that's more your uh, your your expertise. I would say, mm. what, what other situation than gameplay animation would you feel that i mean we're coming back to the the, the work cycle for the background character <clears throat> that that's another good example because when you're animating those background characters you have no idea what angle exactly they're going mm. to be for the uh, camera <clears throat> so we used to do play blast of them of you know three quarters side and in front so we just make sure that it's working from uh every angle but that was definitely just for background and crowd kind of characters do you hear this? I I do. What what's happening? I just wondering. I was because I I I had to screw the setting so I could finally do fire sound effects again in here, but I finally yeah. got it right. Apparently. Is it the time of the stream that we announce a, yeah. a prize or, no, or, or no, something? No. No? I'm going to do this instead. Already, it's, it's anecdote time. <laughs> so I have a little bit of story. A little story here. It's it that is perfectly fitting into this question. Um, and to answer the question that you kind of bounced back in my court, David. Um, so yes, obviously for video games, <laughs> yeah, you see, it's almost like we planned it, but we didn't. The, um, the thing is with video games, yes, normally, de and even depending on the type of video game, some, you might get a little bit more away with more than other video games. Like obviously a side scroller, you're not gonna have to worry about the, uh, all the angles. You, all you care about is what that silhouette looks like pretty much. Um, uh, but a third person game is going to be on the other end of that spectrum. Um, because you're gonna be able to rotate the camera around your character. You could see anything from any point, point of view. And you can't, in a case like this, you can't make it look awesome from all the angles, I find, but you can definitely try to favor the angle that you're most often gonna see. So for instance, third person games, what angle are you seeing most of the time? The ass end of your character. So you wanna make sure that that looks like particularly good because you'll be getting very well acquainted with the ass of your character for many hours playing a game. So make sure that that looks good and the cycle looks good from that angle, which can be tricky because it's a straight on, which is not the, the most flattering of angles, um, but you got to figure it out. And um, I think Assassin's Creed is like a, quite literally a, um, a master class in this. You take a look at the things that they did to the cycles in that game, things that like, you know, would maybe even look awkward in, in some cases from some of the other angles, but looks so badass. Like you take a look at the sprinting animation and it's, it's kind of funny because it looks like what you look like when you're just starting the sprint, you know, that, that when you're digging in and you're just, you're just, it's like a violent flurry of limbs all over the place. It's like this, just a sustained run looks like this. Um, so, you know, it's cause they're trying to make it interesting as opposed to something that just looks kind of static, just kind of bouncing up and down in front of the camera. But, um, yes, even in television and film, I, this is this is where I get to the anecdote. So I worked on a television production many, many years ago. It was called The Sitting Ducks. Um, it was uh, done in Toronto. And um, it was um, it was an interesting television production. And um, there was a guy that that I that sat 
he was actually a guy. He was I was a su- I was a uh, supervisor on that team. Um, so was Marco. Actually, funny fun fact. And mm-hmm. it was um, it was a um, it uh, the team was a, a weird mix of people with a bit more three D experience. Marco and I both had more three D experience than some of the others on the team. Some that were two D animators that just re- just recently because I mean we just had Troy on not so long ago. And uh, we talked a little bit about how, you know, the, the, what the collapse of the 2D industry looked like in, in Toronto. We didn't get deep into it, but it was definitely there. And um, he felt it uh, a, a bit right, like kind of the, 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 he felt the aftermath of that a little bit because he just after he left Disney Canada, it shut down like abruptly. So he kind of dodged that bullet. But a lot of people were displaced and they, they found work in 3D. And they had to train up really quickly. So I there was a couple people that I had um, on that that project. And one guy was on my team. I can't remember his name. Very talented animator. But one thing that he always did was he was always thinking like a 2D animator and was only animating it from the one angle that you would see it from. Okay. And the shots actually held up pretty decently from the angle. But I swear to you, it was like, it was like a it was like a giant dumpster with a lot of little mini dumpsters that were all on fire all at the same time. It was like the mega dumpster fire. It was a mess. And here's the funny thing. It, it, you, might, you might be like, yeah, but who cares? If it looked good from the camera angle, then who cares? Well, you know who cares? The lighting and rendering department cares because the the complete catastrophe that were shadows, cast shadows, and, and like, it was just... Like you can't see it in the viewport because back then there was no seeing shadows in viewports. Let me tell you, it was like you had to render it to see it. And it was a, it was a mess. So it was, he had a huge re uh, take um, count because he was always getting revisions well after he got the animation approved because lighting and rendering would reveal the nastiness that was lying under that surface. <laughs> so, Let's just say that you do need to consider things like this: the lighting and rendering, just the, your interaction with the environment. You know, can um, can definitely come to effect if you. And that doesn't mean that you have to make it look awesome from all the angles, but it needs to at least be reasonable and logical from other angles, probably. Yep. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this anecdote time. All right, I think we're done because obviously <laughs> I've just fallen apart, and now I'm just I, I'm not taking anything seriously anymore. We'll, we'll blame it to it. Veronica. That's, yeah, it is all. That, thank it. you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Animation God. I mean Veronica. I um I will uh, sorry Animation Bingo God. I should be more specific. Uh, thank you for Tony uh, tuning. Uh, wow, tuning in tonight. Thank you, David, for being here as usual. And uh, we look forward to more of these wonderful um, crazy Tuesday evenings in the future. We have another one next week, right? When are you leaving for vacation? Uh, We have one next week, and then there'll be a two-week hiatus. Hopefully, everyone will be able to live without us. All right. We'll we'll refill a little bit of the backlog. Yes, that might happen. I think that's uh, probably exactly. And this one's this one's Veronica. Ready? Which one do you want? Do you want the obnoxious one, Veronica, or do you want like the like the deep one, like the the sort of the um, the the Batman Begins one? Which one? She gets to pick. So so much pressure. I know. I know. I get to choose? Oh, okay. I like this one. Oh. <laughs> I suck at this. I suck at this. No, there's the crickets. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to keep buttons until I get it. There it is. That's what I, that's the one. That's one. And this is just because you can, why, why choose when you can have both, right, Veronica? I don't know why she likes it so much, but I do it just for her. Okay, well, David, thank you. Enjoy your evening. Um, if you uh, you wanted to catch up after this, so don't uh, disappear. I'll uh, end the stream and I'll see you. I'll in a try to not smoke bomb on you. Okay, yeah, okay. If you if you're too tired, that's cool too. All right, see everybody. Cheers. Bye, 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 guys. Oh, um, by the way, before I do disappear completely, um, really quick note, we do have a, a really an interesting conversation tomorrow with um, Lance Lafort. Um, he is uh, a recruiter who runs his own recruiting company, actually, in Toronto. He's been doing it for many, many years. He's also pretty much, well, him and a buddy of mine were pretty much the reasons that I, I had a midlife crisis in my 30s and actually got into motorcycle riding because he's an avid motorcycler and he actually is a motorcycle instructor too. Fun fact. That might come up in the stream. Anyway, He's going to be in um, our our conversation with tomorrow afternoon, and um, we David and I wanted to do that because we thought it'd be really fun to discuss um, just the concept of recruiting, but from from the outside in in a way, or maybe it's more from the inside out. Talking specifically from that perspective could you know that could it could like turn on a bunch of 
like a bunch of lights in our brains and make us understand things that we never really quite understood before. So bring all your recruiting related questions um, tomorrow and uh, show up to that stream because I think it'll be fun because it's uh, it's a little bit uh, a little bit different than your our typical streams where we're bringing in somebody kind of um, um, with a very 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 different perspective. So uh, hope to see some some of you there tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I will see you on the next one at some point in time. Cheers. Thank you.